guys uh, this is vivek and welcome to the second part of our end of the year special of the dead horse podcast with me are ashwin hey and uh, arvind hello yeah we're rounding off this year with a super enthusiastic bang we're all super tired as you can tell from the sound of our voices uh, so continuing the theme from like our best best experiences of the year last last time we discussed the game design trends we thought we found interesting the, today we're discussing the moments in gaming that's like the moments that we found in games this year that stood out for us and made this year special so i'll uh, start off with uh, arvind arvind what, what were the like moments that caught your attention and you know like made no, you the entire of stanley parable was a, <laughs> yeah, like pretty much all of stanley parable was great and okay. then uh, i would actually like strength master was pretty great like especially i remember that one boss fight which Uh, which had moving lights, I think. All the boss like, fights are yeah, pretty great in Stealth Buster. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, but coming back to the Stanley Parable, what did you find about that game? Like, yeah, we both played it. Uh, I've not played it as much as you have, but uh, what what about that made you? You know, what about what moment stood out? I think really the main thing of Stanley Parable is that uh, it feels like a two-way conversation. Like, uh, yeah. It feels like the game is playing you as much as you are playing the game, and on top of that, uh, like it it just surprises every every uh, action you take. Like if you're doing it for the first time, you'll be surprised beyond. Like it just completely surprises you. And that's and that's like delightful. Like that delightful is the word. Like I think that, that this is the first time I've used this word for a video game. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I think the feedback in Stanley Parable for every small action that you do is what is definitely one of the things that makes that game stand out. Especially when you walk into places and close, like small enclosed spaces, closing a door in a small closet or just in in an office, yeah. leads to some really interesting uh, interactions in in that game. Yeah, well, and I got it uh, for launch at at that time. There was also a nice. a uh, community kind of thing that people were in the forum saying oh wait i did this and and this happened yeah. did any yeah. did any of you guys do this by now i think they will be like fully mapped out walk through and stuff yeah yeah But, i think uh, another yeah, game yeah that time it was it was amazing like you like everything was new and it was yeah for sure I think it's a game that's similar in that sense, where a community kind of gathered around it trying to solve its mysteries. Was Pez? I don't know if you played Pez a lot. Yeah, but I didn't it. actually play it during the Xbox 360 time. Like okay. I played it when it came in the humble bundle. So by that time, all the secrets actually Had I didn't been... really like the secret hunting part of Pez because it felt like, uh, like it it felt like an entirely different game and not necessarily one that's. Uh, that Fun. improves upon the previous ones like it's it's pretty much like uh like pressing like just going to levels and pressing uh like certain segments of keys and all like it's like people like that kind of stuff you know the photography the setting but like to me it, it didn't really feel like it was a a part of the game as such it just felt like and okay, here's this other game that okay now the old game is useless now here's okay. this other game that you have to play Okay, and some of that stuff is just like uh, like you really need to like at least like I didn't have the like enthusiasm enough to like uh, create those cubes and stuff like that. So I just looked up solutions and walked through for the hardest puzzles. But like I saw it a bit, I enjoyed it. But like it's I didn't feel uh, like delighted in the same way that like this that the the Stanley Stanley Bell, yeah, delighted. Yeah, I think Pez. Pez's puzzles are are uh, build themselves to a more kind of uh, what do you call it? It's it's basically they uh, they lend themselves to more brute force solutions than uh, puzzles in the Stanley Parable, which kind of lend themselves to exploration and you know uh, curiosity as opposed to yeah. Pez, which is more you try every possible combination and until you hit the combination that you need to solve a particularly hard puzzle or break a particularly hard code. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Which isn't to say anything about you know the people solving those puzzles. It's just yeah. that that is the nature of code breaking. It is a very redundant, redundancy based uh, science. Yeah, I mean, it's for like people to uh, like people who have an interest in cryptography, puzzle solving, that kind of thing. Yeah. 
for sure so they they're very different uh, like they're very different in that aspect but like the community gathering around and trying to figure something out i think in that sense it is kind of similar uh Oh, all right. Moving on from uh, Arvin, we'll we'll come back to Arvin. I'm sure there are many more games he played through the year that grabbed his interest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Ashwin, what about you? Uh, for the fifth year running, I think my favorite gaming moment came again from a Planescape tournament. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding, of course. So the the there are two moments. So probably we'll come back to the next one later. The first one was. I finally got around to playing the original Metal Gear Solid after so many years, and there was really Metal Gear Solid. Uh, the franchise as a whole is famous for its eccentric game design decisions, as you all know. Probably one of the most famous of all of those is Psycho Mantis fight. Yeah. On the original PlayStation, yeah. We don't need to elaborate yeah, on. Absolutely. Yeah, probably yeah. everybody won't break the fourth wall and all stuff, but. My choice is another one. I don't know how popular this is, but this is the sequence where uh, Snake has been captured by uh, I think the Volver Ocelot, and he's about yeah. to be tortured. And the torture sequence uh, involves so if you if you it's a curious choice at that point. You can either resist torture, which mm-hmm. is very hard to do, or you can give them to torture. So if you give them to torture and you give up, that like just you give up, you lose an important character in the game. But it can still continue. But if you choose to resist torture and you fail, it's game over. So it's a very weird decision that you have to make. I haven't seen many games ask me you to make such a decision. So a very Kojima-esque decision. Yes, yes. I don't have a better adjective for that uh, thing. <laughs> yes, that's what it is. And the, the resisting torture bit was extremely difficult. I've been playing games for so many years now. I can't remember doing anything half as difficult. The action is very simple. All you need to do is tap a button repeatedly. But in this case, you need to press it at an insane frequency. So I, I couldn't get it right at all. And finally, I went online, thought I'd get some help from people. And you wouldn't believe the kind of suggestions I got. Some people suggested holding the controller with both your legs pinned down on the ground, and then repeatedly use both your fingers on your hands, so that you actually pass the torture sequence. Can you imagine doing that for a game? <laughs> so I think it's not. They were trying to make a larger point. <laughs> yeah, they were making the point that this is what torture is like. Actually, that's what I took away from it. So it's not a easy thing. It's not child's play. So that really stood out for me. I think it is an amazing thing. Both the choice that the player has to make, plus the the fact that torture can be insanely difficult. Yeah. On a on a related note, one of my uh, moments, gaming moments of the year, is also from Metal Gear Solid game. It's from Metal Gear Solid Two. Uh, it's from the tanker level in that game, in which Snake is uh, has to infiltrate a tanker. I won't say why or what uh, is going on there. But there is an amazing sequence wherein uh, you uh, have to uh, crawl through a laser field and uh, you have to shoot a, a fire extinguisher so that the foam sprays and you can see the lines of uh, like the red lines of the laser so that you know how to move through them. And uh, I had done that so I could now see the see the lines and Snake was crawling under them. But what had happened was because of the spray of the fire extinguisher. Uh, there was uh, some of the foam had deposited beneath it, and uh, there was a guard that decided to patrol at that point in time. So I had to keep Snake hidden behind a hidden uh, in a prone position on the ground, so that the guard wouldn't see him. And Snake was just uh, his face was hovering above the foam. So as the guard uh, walked, didn't notice where I was, and turned around, he was about to keep like he was about he he walked past, and at that exact time because. Snake's face is just above the foam. He sneezes, and because of the noise of the sneeze, the guard turned around and saw me. <laughs> that's and that's a non-scripted moment. Huh? It's a uh, it's not in a cutscene. It's part of gameplay. That is one of like that again is a very Kojima-esque moment in a video game. Only only Hideo Kojima would think that that far ahead of that of that obscure a moment to 
and then put it into a game. Uh, that's, yeah. That's really, really systems driven design. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, which is like I mean, it's 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 apparent throughout that game. Even the boss fights are very system driven. The bosses have like sets of attacks and patterns and movement, and you have to figure out how to beat them. In all the in all the Metal Gear games, that's how it works. Uh, I think a lot of I think a lot of unnecessary flack is uh, drawn because of the cutscene stuff, but uh, they are heavily interactive games. Oh, the boss fights are. Some of the best examples of game design that yeah. I've ever For sure. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think actually the cutscene argument was only ever used for Metal Gear Solid 4. I don't well, think anyone said that like for Metal Gear Solid 1 and 1, 2, 3. That it was like... They're all very similar in that sense though. Like even 2 has a lot of long, half an hour long cutscenes. Like I, I only heard it for four, but yeah, like you know, two was. I four, think the, reason, the reason in four is that it's ostentatious, and four it's there from the beginning. In three, it's in two and three is there at the end. Yeah, you know? that makes sense. Yeah, and yeah. especially when when like they came out at that time, it was like that the card scene was kind of your reward yeah. for completing that level. So yeah, so uh. Ashwin, like Ashwin will get back to you. I'm dying to ask you about uh, Mass Effect. You finished the trilogy this year, so I, I want to talk to you about that. But before before we get to Mass Effect or Last of Us, which you've been playing both of those games, I, I want to ask Arvind, uh, you know, what other what other moments stood out for you this year? Mm, Gone Home was pretty good, especially the level design, and like, there were a couple of actually three moments I think in the game where like you would discover something hidden, which were pretty excellent. Like that like they surprised me. Like I'm pretty sure if once you if you play through the game once you'll know what the three moments are. Okay. But yeah. I've heard there's and, a moment with the, like a bloody bathtub that's supposed to be pretty scary. No, not that one actually. Like there is one with a hidden passage in the house. Okay. Then there's other one with uh, like there's like it's all it's a lot of hidden stuff in the house. Okay. So like yeah, I cannot really describe it without uh, like spoiling, spoiling where it, it is and. Uh, and other than that, uh, I discovered a, a series of adventure games called the Blackwell series. So this was pretty surprising. Like I got the, the Steam key for the latest one for free from a promotion game developer did. And I played and like the intro, in the intro scenario, uh, like in, within uh, the first time I played it, I just quit because I, I wasn't getting it. But the next time I played it, it just clicked for me. And it clicked for me in such a way that I bought all the four games and played them in a stretch. Oh, and really? Yeah, oh, yeah, there wow, are some of the, yeah, they are some of the best adventure games I've ever played. And like, I think they're uh, like equal to really the, the top of the genre. And like Monkey Island, really, you'd say yeah. they're Monkey Island level. Yeah, Monkey Island, Day of the Tentacle, that kind of thing. Wow. So what I, and what I really out. love about it is that like the whole uh, the like everything is just lends itself itself so well to adventure game mechanics. Like the protagonist has a a familiar uh, like like the protagonist is a medium. So she has a spirit that is uh, so that is passed on to her family. So what this enables is that when you are controlling the ghost, you cannot actually pick up and use items. The best you can do is like sort of blow on them. But okay. like as a ghost, you are able to sneak in places that you can't go to usually. You can sneak past locked doors. Okay. So this creates a very, a very natural feeling and interesting uh, like series of puzzles where like naturally you're going to send the ghost ahead, but the ghost cannot go too far away from the like his medium. medium. Yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, actually, so everything the ghost sees, does the medium see, or you, uh, as the ghost, you have to figure no, out no, a way no. to communicate to the medium? No, like you have to talk. So, like, say, if you're a ghost, then you just go and see what's up, and then you go come back, and then you like this. But you don't really need to describe it. It's kind of like hand wave. Like, okay. It's assumed that okay, obviously, like he stole her, her, or she stole yeah. her. What he's yeah. what? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. The protagonist is called Rosa, and the 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 ghost is a like the ghost is just like a monster from the 40s <laughs> I think and he's okay. called Julie so, so do they, both do they of them explain have, the past of the ghost or is that like a mystery yeah yeah they do actually like, they do it's it's in the second game in the series they explain like uh, they explain the ghost's adventures with his aunt like her aunt 
Yeah, and oh, so the ghost is like a family ghost. Yeah, he's been haunting yeah. her. Uh, yeah, that's why the first game is called the Blackwell Legacy. So the oh. ghost is actually the family's legacy. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah it's it's a really interesting story, and like, uh, and it, it it never gets too heavy. And there's also a, an Indian lady in it called Nishanti, which is pretty. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, like she's actually drawn with the sari and everything. So yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's a bonus Sounds for, interesting. Yeah, it's just, I, I, it's a really great game. Like I recommend. Uh, like I have not been ex- this excited for an adventure game like ever. Not even Monkey Island. And I'm describing <laughs> it to you. So, so right. this this game is special. And like and like all the characters are so great. Even the 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 characters who you meet like once like for five minutes, they're just so entertaining and well written. And the story just hits the right balance between like seriousness and light heartedness. It's like there are always stakes, but you never feel like you know like the game is dragging you down. From and it's like oh no, you can't have fun because the the future of the world is at stake. It's never like that. So All it's right. It's just yeah, perfect. Very bad thing. All right. Cool. Uh, so Ashwin, uh, before we get back to you, one of my favorite moments this year was in The Last of Us. It's the ending. I'm. Have you finished the last of us yet? No, don't spoil it. Please, I beg you. I haven't finished the last of us yet. All right, all right. The the ending of the last of us is my probably one of my favorite moments in in gaming this year, in gaming ever close to because the ending of that game is amazing. Uh, because I think it's the entire game is amazing, but the ending just drives home the journey of the characters together, and you know how they how they all end up. Uh, is what makes the ending pretty pretty fantastic. Uh, uh, but yeah, Ashwin, like other than The Last of Us, which uh, I can keep droning on about for ages, you played the Mass Effect trilogy this year. Did anything stand out in those three games for you? Is there any moment that you will kind of like, yeah, that's amazing? Or is there any great moment? Mass Effect, we have already discussed Mass Effect once in the podcast before. And interestingly, of the other games I've played this year, the of course a lot of moments in the last of us do stand out. I yeah. I go the place where I'm right now, where I am I am unraveling the story of this guy called Ish. <laughs> okay. So that, that, that's brief. I I'm not going to go into details, but you never met this person. But I am only rooting for him, and that's that's a success for the game. <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. The the ish storyline is pretty amazing. Uh, you're following that thread now, I'm assuming. Yeah, uh, I've just come out of the sewers and I'm, I've been reading his journals, his notes, and yeah, and and I I, I really jumped out in the seat when I realized that he has actually escaped the sewers. When I got a note, he's actually, he's actually? yeah, he actually escaped the sewers. I got a yeah. note after I got out of the sewers. And I was like, okay, thank God he's not stuck there. He's got no. Well, considering what happens in the sewers is, is awful in itself. Uh, oh my God, don't go there. When, don't go there. when you get into that room and you see the like the guys covered up the kids with a sheet. Yes. Uh, the that's just, it's really awful. With the <laughs> words, they didn't suffer like like crawled out in blood. This it's it's pretty awful. It's after that that is, there's a there's an error in steam pricing, which means. Uh, don't start two packages like one dollar. So I said, if you want to, like, <laughs> the, the rush now must be insane, though. Yeah, ninety-two uh, percent discount huh, on don't stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. I got it just in time. So yeah, this was my <laughs> best gaming moment this year. <laughs> A good deal is uh, Arvind's greatest moment this year. <laughs> oh. Ish is a fantastic storyline, though. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. The yeah, the Last of Us. I think uh, there was one moment in particular. I I think you must have gone past that when Joel is hanging upside down. Oh yeah. Uh, that that is another great uh, bit of gameplay design uh, that I really enjoyed. Uh, of course, the Winter Chapter is my favorite, but we won't discuss that because Ashwin hasn't played that yet. Uh, the Winter Chapter is phenomenal. The Winter Chapter is. The reason I'd say the last of us is a, like it takes it from a good game to a great game, uh, yeah. But that's all I'll say for now. Oh, 
Uh, uh, so Ashwin, other than the Last of Us, what else? What else have you like? What else has stood out for you? This is interesting. What I'm gonna talk about is purely visual. It's not okay. It's not great game design. I don't know what it's all, but it was done fantastically. I'm talking about God of War Ascension. Ah. There, there is a special power that you get in where you can you can make particular objects go forward or backwards in time. So if you go to a a crumble down bridge. Mm. Uh, you can make it go back in time so that it heals to its previous state, and that is amazing. Anybody okay. who has seen and has not seen, had seen it, you should probably Google uh, Google it. It's called the Uroboros Uroboros Amulet, I think. Okay. The way it looks, each 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 fallen stone, each crumble, is reassembles itself in the complete bridge, and you do this and you control this. It's not a cinematic. Like you hold your analog stick to the left, and you can you can control the speed at which each stone should come back to its original position. And a clever thing that they've done is some puzzles need you to stop halfway. Like you should completely heal the bridge, but heal it to a midpoint so that you have some stones left which you can climb over. For example. Okay. So yeah, this was another kind of moment for me here. Cool. Uh, one of my like one of the best moments I've had this year is in a first-person shooter. Uh, not Bioshock uh, uh, Infinite to Arvind's Leap, although that has had some great moments. But uh, for me, one of my best moments uh, this year was in the Metro Last Light when I was stranded in a tunnel filled with uh, spider mutants with only one gas filter left, and I was running out of oxygen, and uh, I had very little uh, ammunition left. So I had to resort to using uh, throwing knives, uh, and just as I'm about to run out of uh, like gas masks, I find a gas mask, and I turn around and throw my last throwing knife, and use it to kill the spider monster that's following me. And uh, as just as I think, you know that like yeah, I've beaten this level, uh, I turn a corner and there are three more waiting for me. <laughs> hey, which game is this again? Metro Last Light. Oh, Metro Last Light. Okay. Yeah. It's a it's a really good first person shooter. Yeah, I was with you until the spiders. Then I was confused because then like I have heard you said it's like this. So there are spider mutants in uh, Metro Last Light. Oh, yeah. Yeah, were they were they there in Metro? I'm not even sure now. No, I don't think so. I think they were a new in, uh, addition because in Metro Last Light there are like uh, there are water monsters also. So they've added some stuff. There's an entire Venice-like uh, railway station in uh, Metro Last Light. Where the <laughs> this is a great part, like where the like the people in that station they make their life by going dynamite fishing, because they're close to a sewer, and uh, they take their boats out and they basically throw dynamite into the water, and like basically bring back whatever comes uh, comes up, and uh, cook it and eat it. <laughs> that sounds like this... a ridiculous little fish. <laughs> dynamite fishing is very common in cold places. Hey, it's common in India. It's not dynamite, but it gets fire explosives. Really? Yeah, of course. I didn't know that. Like, yeah, it, it's pretty really common. In, in Arvind is from a coastal state. Ashwin is from a coastal state, so he would know that. Oh. But it's the rivers, never in the sea. Always in the rivers. So you. They use they they do the explosive fishing stuff in the rivers, huh? Yeah, of course. But well, in the sea, they use huge nets, basically. Yeah, just trawl for. So yeah. what is the explosive that they use? Like if they don't, they don't use dynamite. No, of course not. It's it's probably something more. Uh, dynamite more is not stable. It's not safe. So they are like probably like they grenade and then they throw their hands up. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't think they use grenades. Uh, Ashwin, I have to like. Uh, I have to ask. Uh, did you play the Yakuza games this year? Oh no, I haven't had a chance after the after Yakuza 3 that you won't be. Okay, you you haven't been able to play Yakuza 4, I guess, this year. No, no. Ah, okay. That that has some standout moments as well. There's a really like you play in Yakuza 4. One of the characters you play is a moneylender, and uh, there are some great scenes wherein you have to make decisions whether as to uh, whether or not you loan people money and how you're going to collect money from people, uh-huh. and. Uh, 
there it, it's really amazing the character driven stuff in yakuza 4 is one level above what it was in yakuza 3 uh because uh, you remember in yakuza 3 you're in an orphanage so like you're uh, raising uh, like you're basically running an orphanage so there's a separate plot line for almost every child in the orphanage i mean you remember that part right yes. i do i do yes. in yakuza 4 there are very similar storylines for all four characters you play one of them is a cop and the renegade cop so like he's trying to solve this old case so there's a whole storyline around that one of them is a money lender one of them is a bum and of course the fourth one is kazuma because you cannot have a yakuza game without kazuma <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's really good it's a great game uh but my favorite moment from gaming this year has uh, been in uh, uh metal gear rising revengeance uh there is a final boss fight which is so batshit insane it can only have been made by the platinum people uh the 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 boss gives a like very uh metal gear esque speech before uh, you know taking steroids and going ro- roid raging on you and uh, the it's it's just an amazing battle like you should just watch it on youtube just for the level of insanity that it involves is a fight it's a three stage yeah i i did i i saw my colleague watch it one day at lunch time <laughs> i couldn't help it had to be either resident evil or metal uh, gear i was pretty sure yeah <laughs> metal gear has some game system so he said revengeance so i yeah watch this one it's about a politician or something right yeah yeah it's a politician it's a yeah. senator in the end who basically uh take steroids and just keeps taking more and more steroids first you you uh, cut up the mech that he's in then uh he comes out of the mech and you fight him for a short while in the uh, uh, on top of the mech and then he like takes the third steroid injection which just makes him go crazy right and you uh, you he throws stuff at you which you have to cut up and then you have to fight him again it's it's nuts that boss boss fight is nuts every boss fight in that game is nuts but the the final one is is batshit crazy It looked a lot like Albert Wesker, if you know the guy from Resident Evil series. Wesker? Yeah. yeah. He's he's similar to Wesker, but I think Wesker's swagger sets him apart. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else? What else? Bioshock Infinite's ending was amazing, but uh, yeah. I remember you telling me that you hated the ending. I'm surprised that he's now saying that. Like I, didn't, I didn't. I never hated the ending. I always liked the ending. Uh, Bi- I liked Bioshock Infinite because with even with its problematic elements and its representation of race, uh, for me it's the story of a guy who uh, sets out looking for redemption and uh, realizes that no matter what choice he makes, in every universe that he exists in, there's nothing even resembling redemption for him. Uh, and I think for like a video game and for the kind of video game protagonist he is. it's a pretty hardcore kind of shutdown of you know the old school hardcore male but at least that's where that's the way i read it the hardcore like white male guy who's so capable of that he can take care of everything on his own uh i think it's a pretty very interesting way to deal with that kind of character which is why i love the ending of bashok infinite no. all right arvin what about you is there a I, I, we, we've gone this far without any of us mentioning xcom enemy within <laughs> yeah, like the like it wasn't really stand out. It was kind of even for me that it was great, but I kind of expected it to be great. So I guess it's kind of like uh, like that's a victim what, to yeah, its we, own high standard. Yeah, we take fair access for granted to a certain extent, don't we? Yeah, and like it's it's really uh, like weird because uh, like some of the changes I didn't like, and then some of the changes I like. So it's like like I'm a bit mixed about Enemy Within. Like I love it overall, but. Like some, especially the like. Now I think the balance has shifted too much towards the humans. At least that's how I think. Like in any unknown world, like this uh, strange struggle against like uh, like this really insane enemy. But now it's like uh, like within two or three months, you're you're building giant mechs and like punching an alien to death. Yeah, I think I think the reason for that is. Uh... essentially after playing the number of times we play through enemy unknown our the level of our game has gone up exponentially for enemy within and the challenge doesn't up convincingly in enemy within unless you're playing like i had a horrible iron man run in that game in which i just got completely wiped out 
so the difficulty is still there it's just you got to be prepared to deal with uh, you know the really really shitty things that can happen while playing xcom <laughs> yeah uh, there is that but yeah i do agree that uh, the balance is definitely shifted in favor of humans especially late game late game you get really really powerful yeah i mean even an enemy i know like once you get the plasma and the titan armor you you are like you get more powerful but now it's like even in the mid game like say the balance is shifted like earlier like xcom had an inverted difficulty curve like that's how usually people say like it started out very really tough and then it became tougher at until one point where like the tight turns and then it's like all in your favor now it's kind of like it's hard a little it's like for the first couple of months but after that it's like you you have giant mix and then like yeah so i think yeah, tonally it totally does kind of lose the whole uh, like the, the, the it, it loses the enemy i guess Mm. They exactly don't really uh, figure up until show up until the late game anyway. So it's like, yeah. But yeah, I guess yeah, it's still a very great game, no doubt. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, but uh, I think the standard moments for me was anything whenever a mech punched anything. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, especially the custom animations. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the faces are going to be very loud and more about it. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm fairly certain if uh, Tejas was here, he'd have a bone to pick with Arvind right now about XCOM enemy within. Uh, is he a fan of this, like, uh, the giant mech kind of thing? <laughs> talking I mean, about... I like it. Like, I'm not saying, but yeah, I, I think just in terms of like, the game, it kind of uh, it cheapens the feel, I guess. Okay. Fair enough. About getting more awful late game, I think my only criticism so far about the last of the oil has also been that even though I haven't played through it, I find now that I'm almost midway through the game that I'm not as terrified as I was in the beginning. In the beginning, I knew that if I made one wrong move, I'd probably probably be that I will end up. But now that the balance has shifted, that I'm more powerful now. feel even if i make a mistake i just blast my way through yeah i think uh, especially late, late game last of us when you have a lot more resources especially if you're a hoarder and you like to collect and uh, hoard uh, the and craft the items that you need especially the zombie levels become a lot easier because you've stacked up on shields you've stacked up on molotovs so your life becomes a lot easier i guess some people like that kind of gratification Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of people do enjoy. It's a part where you know all the hoarding pays off because you don't have to uh, worry about resources. There are certain points, especially uh, towards the end of that game, where uh, hoarding the kind of the hoarder kind of player is rewarded for all their hoarding because just because of the kind of situations you're put in. Uh, but it's not like that's the only option. They they give you a lot of options. That's what I like. It's a very different kind of game considering the de- who the developers are. Naughty Dog uh, kind of like broke the mold with the kind of game that they were making this time around. A lot of it is it is seems to be. You can see that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there's not much else really to talk about. I mean, Robin Hood is not uh, like Robin Hood is one of the standout moments for me. Uh, gaming of games that I played this year because just because of the breadth of stuff you can do and uh, like the fact that as a game it is non-linear and. even though it was made so long ago the amount of options you have as a player is is pretty nuts uh so that's why i love that game uh and you can craft arrows and and it's commandos but with robin hood so that's why i like that has has anyone else here played robin hood legend of shadow yeah i've played oh. it i've completed it yeah. okay they not recently i imagine a while ago though yeah yeah Did, did you like enjoy it? Way back, yeah. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, it was it was like commandos light, I guess. Yeah. Except yeah, there aren't like enough there aren't enough commandos light for that to be a thing. But yeah. I think at, at that time there were a lot of games like commandos. Like, I I can think of two other franchises. I can think of Desperados and uh, Robin Hood. That's about it. Yeah, fair. I I still think I thought there were there were others, but like I I cannot recall them at at this point. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Uh, does anyone have any other games to talk about that 
stood out for them this year? Mm, no, not like I the first couple of hours of Andy Chamber really like were amazing. But after that, it's just like just like it it got to the point where like I knew what I had to do, but it just hurt my head. <laughs> like, yeah, the level design uh, can be like that sometimes. Yeah, and especially like once it gets to the part where it becomes a block puzzle thing. And like I was surprised, like rock paper short can had the same complaint word for word in their like kind of year end review. Like, but but say so, yeah, I guess uh, they like, and the and the comments so I guess thing of like anti chamber. But yeah, it was good. Like the first couple of parts were amazing, but after that, not so much. I where did I lose interest in? I think. Uh... There is a one particular puzzle after which I think I just uh, uh, I didn't play with the same intensity that I was playing that game. Although yes, I do agree that uh, the antechamber and Cairo are both fantastic uh, examples of interesting level design as games go. Yeah, I have to pick Cairo. Antechamber was one of the reasons I'm uh, trying to like. I I would really like to make a stealth game with antechamber style level design. I think that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Uh... Coincidentally, I'm making a stealth game with anti-chamber style level design. Oh. <laughs> or at least I think it is. I'll find out how, how much it is. You can start playing it. Uh, all right, Ashwin, is there anything else that, that you have to add from this year that stood out for you? Not really. Sadly, I don't have a game to play. Okay. Well, yeah, there's nothing much from, left for me either. I mean, uh, Total War Shogun 2 had some fantastic moments, but I've already mentioned all of them. Uh, my ninjas accidentally poisoning allies and stuff like that. That was pretty great. Uh, that campaign ended with uh, quite a bang as well. My entire empire dissolved because I failed to... I had this master plan to take out the uh, the Tokugawa shogunate in, uh, in Tokyo, but it failed and all my armies were kind of attacked by my allies simultaneously. <laughs> so... It was a red wedding kind of moment, except there was no wedding and everywhere my allies were attacking and killing me. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, I think yeah, like it was. Like, this is kind of like the reverse of a uh, standout game moment, but the first hour of Far Cry, Far Cry Blood Dragon. Okay. Yeah, that was just like that was painful. Like I'm, yeah. Like I I bought it knowing that like everyone was saying just forget the first hour after that it becomes good. But I wasn't prepared for the sheer badness of the first hour. Is like that for like, Yeah, it's just like, like what, whatever you think are the good parts of the past right? three, just, just remove all of them. And like, and like, apparently the developers thought that uh, just because like you lock the controls and say like press space to jump, and your protagonist says, "Oh my God, that's annoying." That doesn't make it not annoying, you know. And especially if you do that for every single thing, like press W to walk and press this loop. So imagine like the most obnoxious tutorial possible and spread it to like the first one, 1. 1.5 hours. So that's like the intro to Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Oh, wow. That... Yeah, I mean, it's like, <laughs> I don't even know how they like thought that it was. That sounds, I don't know, that sounds insane. Uh, uh... But let's not do let's not do standout horrible moments or like let's not do the downer moments. We should we should have a separate yeah. podcast for all the shitty moments in gaming in, in 2013 if we ever decide to do that. So that should be a separate thing. <laughs> because there were there were a few of those as well. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, if does anyone have anything else to add? If because if they don't, I'm going to call it here. Yeah. Okay. Call it. <laughs> all right. This is the end of. Uh, episode 12 of the Dead Horse Podcast, guys. Vivek here, signing out. And with me are Ashwin. Hey, bye-bye. And Arvind. Bye. See you guys.